SwimmingWorld.tv coming to you from the conclusion of the Charlotte Ultra Swim. I'm Garrett McCaffrey, joined by Swim Network's Mike Gustafson, and Mike's going to help us kind of recap all that we saw tonight and maybe a little generalization about the weekend. Uh, we did crown a, a champion in the points race. There was a lot of money handed out tonight, which is always exciting for the sport. And it was Peter Vanderkay on top of that podium tonight. Yeah, PVK, uh, the workhorse of, of, of the swimming community. You know, he's always there. He's always at the top of the list, always at the top of the results. But, uh, you know, he, he's never, like, the talk of the town. And this weekend was a, a great opportunity for PVK to uh, get some exposure, you yeah. know, and, and hoist that giant check above his head, you know. Uh, congratulations to PVK. I, I, I was rooting for him the whole meet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you feel like he was the talk of the town this meet, though? As much as he should be. I mean, you're right. I'm, I'm saying he's underrated at this point still. I think, I think, um, well, you know, after each day he was the leader. Uh, for the for the the Wendy's Carolina Classic, and I think it, gar it garnered him a little bit more recognition than he would have gotten. Um, you know, after he, he's a, he's an interesting guy. After the uh, when I was talking to him after he got his check, um, you know, I was wondering what you know what he's going to go do, and he, he's going right back to work. No days no days off for Peter Vanderke. I thought was interesting. Yeah, he just he keeps getting faster, and you know Mike Bottom is up there now, so he's got a new coach, and he's just kind of transitioned seamlessly. He's doing new things, and his times are just getting incrementally faster. I mean, the, the suits don't seem to affect him whatsoever. He's still he's still just kind of charging forward, setting meet records um, as he did this weekend, and so it is good to see. You get, you can't help but pull for a guy. Uh, people around the swimming community have to. I mean, are the only people that would recognize because obviously if you see somebody. Uh, finish on in front of Michael Phelps they might not fully understand that but PVK is definitely a, a favorite with the tight knit of swimming community and you know he's he's always been he's always been that way getting a little bit better each year I remember um, I didn't swim against him but I swam with him in in, in high school in Michigan and uh, I think freshman year he didn't even make state championships didn't make the state qualifying time sophomore year I think he was like 440 in the 500 free. Junior year, he's 432 or 433. And then senior year, 423. It's like he dropped like 10 seconds each year in high school, and he's just kept doing that throughout his whole career. Um, it's nice to see him do well. Yeah, let's talk about some of the swims we saw tonight. Started out the night, uh, I believe, in the 200 IM. Nope, oh, yeah, 200 IM was the first event uh, after we got the distance ones out of the way. So let's start with 1500 on the ladies' side, um, and Emily Brunneman. Kind of an upset versus Chloe Sutton. I mean, they haven't really gone head to head in a while in a 1500, but uh, Brunneman, the open water world championship team member from last summer, really kind of took it to Chloe starting around the 800,000 mark and, and really kind of broke her um, and, and took, the, took the win. They were neck, you know, they were neck and neck uh, most of the race, and then, and then about two thirds of the way through, Brunneman just, just took over. Uh, I don't think Sutton was very happy about it. Performance. And that's the question. She was obviously not happy. I mean, I have not seen someone so clearly wanting to demonstrate that she is not happy after a race. She was, she's always, I've been to a lot of meets where Chloe swims, and she's always very respectful when it comes to waiting for everybody to finish in a 1500. She, I don't think she got out, but she was thinking about it. She was ready to get out of that pool right away after that swim was finished. Is that a good thing because you see the competitive fire in her and the fact that it really does bother her to lose, or is it? You know, borderline uh, unsportsmanlike. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong, this or that. But I mean, just it, I, that's the that's the question. I mean, if 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 it's unsportsmanlike, uh, you know, then you have one perspective. But how can you blame a competitor for being upset when they don't win? Because she obviously expected to. Yeah, I, you know, she's 18. She's. Uh, Learning the, the ropes, I guess you would say. Um, I talked to her for about an hour before before the mile, and uh, she comes across as incredibly passionate, fierce competitor. Um, you kind of wouldn't get that from Chloe because you see her; she 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 comes a, a, across with an appearance of, of being a sweetheart, and then underneath. That sweetness. There's this killer attitude, and, and we saw that be. in the mind. Yeah, there has to be. It, it, absolutely, to even survive in open water events. Like she was telling me some of the 
things she's experienced, she actually she actually tapes her goggles. I don't know if that's a common thing in open water swimming, but she tapes her goggles to her head because she constantly gets, you know, fists all the time. I don't know if 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 that if she's learned to be more aggressive and and that's something she can't control, but uh, yeah. We'll see what happens in the future. I, I, I think as she matures more and more, um, she'll lose graciously. And maybe that's, uh, yeah, it's tough to do. And you're right, she's still a young girl, so she's still learning. Or maybe there's some, you know, some built up rivalry between her and Brunneman because yeah. Brunneman did win in that open water national, or uh, world championship trials last summer. And so you can only imagine that there was some physical play going on because that's part of the open water race. Yeah, anyway. You never know. So maybe yeah. that's part of it as that's, well. Maybe we've got a, a rivalry. We could definitely use more rivalries here in swimming. So we, we could, for sure. We'll move on to the 200 IM. Um, and on the ladies' side, it was one heck of a race. You know the name Justine Mueller? Because if you don't now, I think you will by the end of the summer. She's a Big Ten swimmer, right? Yep, Michigan. Michigan, Michigan. Um, you know, I, in the interviews after the race, she was talking about um, how difficult, not difficult, but like she's, she's one of those professional swimmers that has to balance a job and training. And she says she just started doing doubles and she works in between practices and um, it's good for her to go out the window. I talked to her yesterday and it, it seems like every time you see her swimming at one of these Grand Prix with some of the big names, it's like, uh, you know, Hoff, Cookers, and then Mueller's just kind of hanging in there for the beginning part of that great I am in, in Austin. You saw Justine in the mix, and then uh, in this weekend you see Rebecca Sony tearing it up in the breaststroke, and then Justine Mueller finishing second, you know, getting in there. And, uh, and after um, Rebecca, that 200 breaststroke's kind of open this summer as well. And then you see her tonight take on Dagny, and at the 100, she was probably half a second full body possibly behind and she buzzed the tower on Dagny Knudsen in that breaststroke leg. It, I mean, it was like nothing else. She just absolutely caught up and then chewed her up and spit her out on that third leg of the, of the IM tonight. Yeah, I thought, I thought Dagny would, 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 I thought Dagny was gonna dominate and based on her other 200s this meet, but um, you know, Dagny didn't have a 400 IM that she wanted to have. Came across in 200, I guess. Yeah. As well. Maybe, I mean, that breaststroke could be something that Dagny needs to uh, address going forward this summer because that, I mean, her butterfly is solid. She won the 200 fly this weekend. Uh, her freestyle is obviously there, winning the 200 freestyle in a rip roaring 157. Yeah. And so you, you know that those strokes are there. Maybe the breaststroke is, uh, is the possible Achilles heel for Dagny Knudsen at this point, which at is something point. that you can obviously address and which she'll probably do out there in Fullerton moving forward. Is that through what the she's summer. doing? Is that what she's doing? That's the word on the pool deck. We won't I, I confirm, asked confirm, but I'm pretty sure we can lightly confirm. I will tell you that she took money this weekend. So that means that she's no longer collegiately eligible. That is a, that is a fact. Um, so there, and I asked her that in an interview I did earlier, and it was tough to get anything out of her. What her it plans was. were? You yeah. could kind of see talking, swimming, talking, swimming, and then talking and the other uh, stuff. Don't want to talk about it. She didn't want to talk about no. it, and you can't blame her. She's another young girl, and she doesn't want to necessarily, you know, hurt anybody's feelings or do anything like that. But you know, she's making some big decisions right now, and uh, I, and word on the street is that she will be training out at Fullerton. Can you imagine this training? I am group and middle distance sick. group with <laughs> with Cookers, Hoff. Myers, who's already out there, and now Dagny Knutson, and not to mention Dagny mixing it up with Carolyn Burkle in the mid-distance yeah, stuff. I mean, you, you, you guys should drive out there and record some of those, you know, test set, test yeah. set I am set. I mean, that'd be as good as recording any of these grand prix meets. I think people would be almost <laughs> as interested. I yeah, mean, absolutely. it's going to happen out there, and it, it's going to be it's going to be awesome to watch. I don't know that they've ever put that many, like, superstar girls together on a team um, in the same training group. Uh, Sean has assembled one unbelievable stable the, of ladies you know going forward through the summer he's making it very attractive to, for, for for these swimmers to come out there do you think that that's the right move for Dagny? i don't know i'm kind of i i don't have any doubt in sean's coaching ability zero doubt whatsoever in in sean hutchison's coaching ability but like i said there's never been a situation where that many high level girls go together and you know i this is kind of not the pc way of saying it but girls are a little different when it comes to mentality and practices day in and Love day out. Love to see out. a reality show. That's, I told Sean. I said, Sean, I want the rights to the reality show. Put him show. in the house. <laughs> Secret cameras, man. 
<laughs> we can produce it. I'm down. Let's let's do it. Let's do it, Sean. This is your team right here. We want to come do the reality it's, show let's for the Fullerton happen. Elite Squad. It'd be amazing. It would be really good, and that's the bottom line. It's going to be very interesting to watch. Um, I know Sean's really excited about it. So it, no, no matter what happens, it's going to be awesome to watch. And we, Love it. you know, of course, we we want all the best for everybody out there. Yeah. So I I don't know if it's it, I I wouldn't like I said I don't doubt anything that Sean does, but. Dagny's gonna go from not training with anybody to training with that group. That's that, it's yeah, gonna be interesting how that transitions. In, in the Dakotas, like what, yeah, she's. I, I can only imagine what it's going to do day to day um, with her training. We are just ripping through this recap. Woo! I mean, two events now, and it's been probably about minutes. ten minutes. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's get on to the guys. Two hundred IM and. You know, you, I don't remember the last, I don't know when the last time Michael Phelps lost the 200 IM head to head in the final was. So, but I think people kind of wondered, you know, after Chanteau beat him in the prelims today, people said, what if? Could Michael Phelps lose in the 200 IM tonight? Nope. He couldn't. I mean, he put it away. You could almost tell coming off the backstroke, the butterfly to backstroke transition, and you're like, the, he's not going to get him. Nah, yeah. I thought he was going to get the meet record. He's a 10th off. Um, but you know, coming home, uh, I was watching the, the the webcast, and they're like, "You just." I wish they could measure just the sheer amount of gallons that, that Phelps just pulls with each freestyle stroke. It was it was, it was sick. I, yeah. I love watching the guy swim. Um, I thought Chanteau would be a little faster. Thought we were going to see a race, but uh, just based on that 200 breaststroke last night, 210, thought he was going to be a little bit faster. But hey, you know. Talk to him about it. If you guys want to check out the interview on Swimming World TV, we did. Uh, we talked about what he needs to do to be more in the mix for that. But he says that's my third event. I'm not really concentrating on that. I'm not going to sacrifice what I'm doing with the breaststrokes to get a better backstroke, which is what he said was his weakness. That makes sense. But yeah. At the same time, you'd like to see him uh, rip something off like that. Moving on to the next event of the evening, and that was the 200 backstrokes. Um, and we saw Missy Franklin getting a win among some big names like Beisel, Um uh, it, and the shoes. taking the win for the 15 year old, that's a big thing. To get the confidence of getting your hand on the wall first at a meet with all of these names has got to be big for Missy Frank. Do you think Missy, it, I mean, do you think she's, she's too young to even realize what she's going up against? Like, there's that aspect of being too young to really feel almost what's an ignorance is bliss. Yeah, being naive in a, in a good way to help, you know, the swimming yeah. part of that. I, she seemed just very excited to be here in the interview. I mean, I did an interview yeah. with her yesterday, and She's she fun. just seemed excited to be here. So grateful. You've never seen a more humble, gracious person. I mean, she was awesome. So yeah, I think she she might not realize that she you know it, it plays to her advantage. I, I, I definitely I think it might you know being a young swimmer and not really necessarily thinking of it. Oh my God, I'm racing Elizabeth Beisel, 2008 right. Olympian in this event. Oh my yeah. God, oh my God, she's just like oh, I'm gonna go race to her back. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Um, yes, it was it, it was a that was a close race too at the end. Guys, 200 backstroke, also a, uh, a close race. And Ryan Lochte, as Ryan Lochte does in season, takes on a very aggressive schedule of events. We will get to it because <laughs> it was the pinnacle of aggressive scheduling tonight. And oh my God, did he perform? And it started with a win in the 200 backstroke. Um, and it, it it was impressive. 158, great time in season. Great, um, getting in there for second, I believe, was Grievers, right? Or no, yeah, Grievers, I think, got in there and touched two double O. He wanted, for second. I know, yeah, he wanted to break two minutes. He nope, sorry, me. it was the Italian, uh, Sebastian Renfagni. I don't know if that's how you even say it, but one of the Italian guys got second, and then Grievers finished third. Grievers just, that's the first time he's raced that in I don't know how long, though, so. Grievers could, Grievers has the potential to have an amazing 200 pounds. I mean, would you agree? He said so. I mean, he said so that that's possibly his best event. He just needs to practice it. He said at the 150 turn, he saw Lochte do what Lochte does at the 150 and kind of take off underwater, and he, he let it get to him, and it shouldn't have. He said, and I said, that only comes with experience. He said, exactly. So he says, you got to stop being a baby. I got to grow a pair. And I gotta and I gotta keep doing the 200 backstroke it to sounds, learn how to race it. Yeah, that sounds like Matt. Yeah. Let's let's talk about uh, another swimmer in that race. Finished fifth. And I tonight probably have never hated doing an interview more than I did interviewing Aaron Pearsall tonight. I don't I don't think it's anything serious. 
but for a guy, he doesn't have to be fast right now, and he wasn't real fast this weekend, but he just always seems to find a way to get at least in the mix, you know, if not win. I mean, when's the last time Aaron Pearsall, that was my first question, right after I asked it, I'm like, ah, oh, I am such a jerk for having to ask Aaron Pearsall this question, because he is by far one of the nicest, one of my favorite swimmers to watch of all time, no doubt about it. And I was like, I hate asking this question. And I said, when's the last time you didn't even finish on the podium in the backstroke events? He's like, it's been at least 10 years. That was my opening question. And I was like, oh, no. Dagger through the, no, 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 that's, no it's I hated question. the interview. I hated it. That's you a, guys will love it though. Swimmingworld.tv, <laughs> check it out right now. <laughs> that's a, no, that's a fair question. I mean, when was the last time? And he said over 10 years. And we continued to kind of talk about it and whether if it was, you know, his body kind of catching up with him or what it was and and uh, what was it? he said it was just being buried in training he said he, he just trained right through this one he wasn't prepared like he sometimes prepares for a meet and uh, he just kind of was getting buried in training and after it I said Aaron I'm I said, I'm really sorry, man. I didn't really know what I was going to ask, and I didn't expect it to be those questions. And he just, as cool as Aaron yeah. Pearsall can be, he goes, it happened, buddy. It happened. Like, and I was kind of like, okay, I think he's going to be all right. Yeah, if there's one swimmer that would be cool with his performance, it would be. We've just never seen him in that situation, though. We've never seen him that far out of the, the race for the win. Do you think he's fine? I think he's fine. I do think he's fine. It's just, I you can't help but just kind of get a little nervous just because it is a position you've never seen him in. But he's got a chance this summer to be the first athlete to win back to back to back titles in the 100 back, right? Or not this summer, sorry, in, in, in London. Yes, exactly, yes. And no, he didn't He didn't win, so back to back to back, so three times. Yeah, three times, yes. Back to two. 04, 08. Yep. Really yes, he does have a chance in that hunter back show to do that. So that would be a big deal. Big deal. Um, let's move on because we are just dragging along. But I'm having a great time. By the Me way. too. Let's talk this about. Very nice. Let's talk about uh, the hundred freestyle, which came up next. And I didn't even get to see it. I was running around interviewing. But Natalie Coglin getting another win on the night. I mean, as much as you would expect Natalie to do, she's uh, she's just kind of I getting her, back in shape. I called her Natalie Coughlin. Oh. And I wanted to start restart the interview, but I didn't for some reason. Did she correct you? She looked at me like, who, like who the hell is this guy? <laughs> like, what is he talking about? Um, no, she didn't correct me. Though. I put my foot in my mouth with an interview with her yesterday too, and I was like, so let me try to analyze your race. Like, I know anything. I was like, did you just wait too long to hit the go button? She's like, no. <laughs> so she, but she's a pretty cool interview. I've she's really enjoyed very friendly getting to, the, to know Natalie a little bit more through interviews this year. She's very friendly. This is the first time I've ever talked to her face to face. Yeah. I think I'll get another win in there, so I yep. think uh, that's a good thing to see. She's going to be right where she needs to be come August, be expecting Natalie Coughlin. And then we saw 100 freestyle. The times wouldn't blow you away. Gideon Lowe taking the win, 50.0, great swim for Gideon. But the swim of that race had to be Lochte touching second. Yeah. Maybe 20 minutes after the 200 Maybe, backstroke, uh, yeah. going a 50.2. I asked him in an interview, when's the last time you threw up after a race? He says he's never done that, but he laid around in the pool like a dead man for <laughs> at least a solid five minutes. They, they were like, well, he, Ryan, we got to do these awards. And he's like, just just give me a minute. Like, he, I didn't he's all know. about the races, man. He's just all about the racing. He just wants, I mean, he should, I, I want Ryan Lochte to sign up for every single event at the next Grand Prix. That would be fantastic. There's some cool, I think there's some really cool racing the programs challenge. and meets that you could set up to really showcase that kind of endurance and that 50. kind of versatility. The Jack 50 is kind of one of them. He showed it some, some versatility, but what if you did that with maybe going and, and doing some different events, like you swim 100 of each and then you do an IM and then you swim 200 or 50 of each and then you do another IM and just, you know, do a point system kind of like what they did here at Swim Mac and, and Ryan Lochte, I think, even though Phelps is just as versatile, I don't, I mean, that I felt I can't say I would doubt that Phelps would do it, but it would be so fun to watch those two go at it in a, in a race setup they like could that. Go, yeah, they could go right down the event lineup. That's what we did in high school when you were senior. Your last meet, you swam every single event exhibition. It was like the the you know the the, the challenge to do. And Let's do it. Phelps, Lochte, be great. I'd I watch it. I don't know who to bet on. I mean, you don't ever bet against Michael Phelps, but I mean, Ryan Lochte has proven a, a level of toughness, like his double at the Olympics and whatnot, that I don't know that anybody's matched. So we're going to produce. To turning it around. We're going to produce a reality show. The Fullerton Fast. We've got yep. the gentleman's challenge between Lochte and Phelps. Yes. A couple of good projects coming your way. This is, this is exciting stuff. <laughs> Swimming World and Swim Network working together, <laughs> bringing you guys the together. best coverage that we can. Some points of light. <laughs> So let's kind of wrap this one up with, uh, let's let's go swim of the meet. One swim that st stood out most. Ooh, um, good it, question. We'll do swim of the meet and then we'll yeah. do race of the meet. Okay. Those are two different, you two, know, yeah. two different uh, sides. It, swim of the meet's gotta be Sony. 
Um, the 105 or the 120 or the 222? 222. 222. I mean, six, it was sixth fastest all time, I think. Um, that something like that. It, it, that's with the suit stuff. And I mean, that's an outstanding, two, in a 200, that's outstanding. Right. You know, 222, that's sick. The craziest thing about it, that's the second time she's done it this season. That's sick. And I, I said to her today, I go, 222 twice in one season. Are you going to go 218, 219 this summer? She said, oh, ha, 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 maybe 221. And I was like, <laughs> you're just being modest. So yeah. I'll, go, I'll agree with that one. I mean, it's a debate between her 100 and her 200 yeah, because... But the 105 was more surprising for Rebecca Sony, but overall in the in the world, I think maybe you're right. 200, her best event was the most impressive. How about the uh, the race? I think you could talk about a couple of Phelps races. You could do the 200 free, or you could do the 100 backstroke in those races. Um, I love the 200 free. Uh, okay. Former teammates, uh, they've raced so many times. You got Vander Kay, who's like this, you know, the swimmer of the meet, and and, and you know. Phelps out in, you know, what was he, lane one, yep. way out there. It's the first event of the meet, like everybody was riled up. Four, one, four one hundredths of a second, three one hundredths yep. of a second. Uh, I love that race. Yep. I love that race. Uh, I'm right there with you. So that's it. I mean, it if you've made it this far, thank you for staying tuned to this video. But, Mom, uh, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. That's the Charlotte Ultra Swim 2010 version. I'm Gary McCaffrey. This is Mike Gustafson. Mike, up, thanks, for, uh, hey. thanks for joining me for thanks this. Thanks for bringing me on. Thanks for watching Swimming World.